Yeah, yeah. What's up, Juventini? Welcome back to the AJC. It is match day. Juve Lazio, first leg of the Coppa Italia semifinal. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we're we going to have a week full of lives. Uh, we'll have the podcast uh, on uh, post-match tomorrow. But uh, Omar, hey, how are you doing? One day removed from our last live show. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a bit of a deja vu. I'm I'm losing track. So are we recapping or we just <laughs> previewing a match? I lost count. But there yeah, it kind of throws us back to last season when we had like I don't know 140 episodes. Oh, there's a lot, a lot of shows, a lot of shows last season. But uh, today it's, it's all about the Coppa Italia first leg. All right, and uh, this is gonna be um, yeah, it's gonna be a, a big one. In terms of the media, what they're trying to say, what they're trying to proclaim, that it does have bearing on what happens with Massimiliano Allegri. We're going to tackle our thoughts on that because, yeah, we both kind of stand on sure. the same uh, page when it comes to the importance, the weight of this particular game. All right. We are going to take a quick second to welcome everybody to the show, get a little bit more time for everybody coming in and say, what's up, LJJ? Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, ciao tutti, we got to get the W later, we're due for a good result, that is a massive understatement, uh, brother, uh, we are definitely, definitely due for a good result, uh, Veda, ciao tutti, Opa saying Juve wins today, uh, Tomas sending his uh, regards to all except Allegri, all right, all right, Anish, Oh, would you agree with me today or no? Absolutely. Here's your greeting. Ciao, Anish. Haven't seen you in a long time. I know you always ask about call-in shows. I'm working on setting something up where I will come on for some lives and we will do call-in shows, all right? All right. Now, Tony Tran, buongiorno. Let's go, everybody. Pierre, ciao, boys. Tough times. Yeah, you know, we got to uh, snap out of it at some point. Hopefully, uh, today's the day, all right? And... Uh, we will get into the Coppa Italia match. There is quite a bit of news circulating around Juventus today. So there's a lot to actually discuss and uh, tackle. Um, we're going to kick things off with um, Rabio and McKenney as talks es essentially, okay, talks have been uh, suspended until end of the year for Adrian Rabio. Omar, do you have your decision made on Adrian Rabio already? Do you think there's anything that could change whatever your particular decision is on the player? What are your thoughts? <clears throat> Honestly, I don't. It's very hard. Like it's it changes from like game to game. Yeah. I don't know. We, on one hand, like this is his fourth season. He's had one that was actually he was our best player and provided numbers, but then it all dropped out this season. So. He had like, I know we went back to like one in 10 good performances. That's not good enough. He's on a heavy salary. On the other hand, he's the only one who's, you know, physically is at the, like a world-class level uh, with strength and speed and, and the work rate he does. I, I think like, I feel like the other guys in the team are not up for it, like playing three matches a week and stuff. So Physically, he's our best guy, but one out of ten good performances is not good enough. I don't know. Maybe he'll have like a good burst of, of performances later in the season to help us, you know, keep our our Champions League spot, and then maybe we'll reconsider it. But I haven't made up my mind about him, to be completely honest. Yeah. So RB just saying straight up after the laughing scenario, it really pissed him off. Get him out. I. I... I'd be lying if I said I felt differently. I mean, I just, the it, it, the performances, the lack of consistency, um, I kept doing this back and forth with Rabio quite a bit, um, even through last season when he had his strongest season with us. I'm just at the point where it's too much flipping in my mind, which leads me to believe just, Cut the cut the ties. Um, cut the ties. But um, we do it does have... feel like it. 
you know, Rorschach here saying, I say we keep Rabio, but if he won't budge on his salary, then we have no choice to cash in on him now. I've also kind of felt like his salary for what we actually get in turn is not really in line. And if you look down, down the line of what they're trying to do with salaries of players, it just it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'd probably say... Uh, time to cut those ties. McKenney. McKenney, apparently there is this gap with management and him in terms of demands. We've talked about this before and offering lower. Maybe cashing in on him now is the right time. Maybe you do that. Maybe you do that and you move forward. What are your thoughts on that and McKenney? Well, that's usually, you know, you get your answer in hindsight. So I... I would have actually liked to keep him, but if it gets too complicated, then yeah, don't don't go in there. Don't like get pulled into a negotiations about higher salary, too high. I, I don't know what he asks for, but um, I think he's ready. He wants to be like a starter for some team at his age, the, where his career is at right now. Uh, I don't think he'll accept being a bench player at Juve. So, yeah, good opportunity maybe to cash in on him. But if he wants to stay, and I mean, I have no objections. I, I I would love him actually to stay as a backup player. I think he does have something to offer to the team. Just not good enough to be a first-team starter. Or the the partnering is not good. And him, Rabio and Locatelli are all too defensive, similar, slow, uh, and not, you know, not enough attack minded and creative and has like vision or anything and he has no goal this season which is also disappointing yeah um, might be a good time to cash in on him yeah and then ljj bringing up the uh point about uh the only reason to keep him uh is because of the uh club world cup in the usa some extra exposure attention while there and stuff but uh ultimately um, I'm kind of right on uh, the same line as you with um, he, he should be he should end up being like a rotational player and I'd love for him to stay around and do that for Juventus but um, the ultimate goal has to be boosting the strength of the first team players at Juventus um, I wouldn't be making any moves right now that would kind of hinder that or affect that. Everything should be done and decided in in terms of how we can boost the actual starting lineup. Now, you could look at that and look at McKinney and say, well, he's been one of our best performers this season, so you look elsewhere for issues. But then again, you come into the money side of things. And what Juventus is trying to do contractually, do we want to commit do we want to have a salary that we deem too high in terms of the project overall? Probably not. And if you have a the sale question. and you have tried to sell him before and strongly tried to push him away before, this could be the opportunity to make that move you wanted to and then look elsewhere for trying to bolster the squad, right? Well, the, the question is, do you think he can get better? Or is this the final product? Is, it, is this the best McKenny can be? Because if he does, then I'm sorry he's not a starter for you. But but I can just, what I've said about him, I can say about most of the team. I mean, aside from maybe Bremer, Vlahovic, and Chiesa, I think everyone else is like, yeah, either stay or go. I, I don't really care, but we need to replace a lot of those guys in order to like compete in, in four tournaments. And I, I don't think like any of them is like the top, top level that can take us far in, in whatever tournament we participate in. Obviously not in Serie A, maybe not in Coppa Italia. We'll find out today, probably. Because it's not like all of them are new guys. They've been here for three years, some even more. Yeah. I mean, they kind of, they kind of prove they're not up to it. And yeah, we've talked about Allegri and... Allegri has a big part in it, but some of those guys, when you see them playing, I mean, you know it's not it. When you see a rare talent or someone that's that can become world-class, you usually spot it immediately. Yeah. 
But Dad saying we should base our decisions on players on actual game plan that we want to implement next season. We have a lot of players that are very one dimensional. Yes, yes, absolutely. Hard to uh, disagree with that, you know. Yeah, uh, and I also feel hard. like it wouldn't be too hard to replace him. Find yeah. someone you know with similar characteristics. So yeah, yeah, we do have to. Uh, and uh, Michael Razzo just reminded me. What's going to do a little later? Might as well get it out of the way right now. All right. Uh, birthday shout out going out to uh, Luca Natale, our very own Luca from the AJC team. So if you're out there on your social media platforms, send that son of a bitch a birthday wish. All right. So uh, there you go. And then we got uh, Michael Razzo in here. My birthday wishes to pass the flu and for Juve to win. Well, get better soon, my friend. Happy birthday. And yes, let's let Juve get you a birthday victory, all right, for you and Luca, all right? So let's go, everybody. A couple birthday shout-outs. So Rabio McKinney, we just keep uh, watching out what's going to happen with those contract situations, all right? Now we got um, Coop Mainers, obviously. We've known the story for quite some time where it's at. News today just kind of reiterates that it's going to be somewhere around the 60 million euro mark. All right. And Hoisin and Sule are the two main names being looked at for trying to bring that price tag down. I've said since the Bremer situation has kind of unfolded, for me, you leave Hoisin alone. He should be looking at integration next season. I think you have to start kind of planning for that. And I would do it through him. That leaves Sule on the plate for potentially being a move to make to bring in Coop Mainers. And even there, a little hesitant because I still feel what happens with Sule is also directly related to what happens with Federico Chiesa. So I think this is a tough, tough scenario. Um, it might be that both of these guys are off the plate and we can't really bring that price tag down a whole lot because the other is Illing Jr. But Illing Jr., we might get a little bit more out of a Prem side than the value he's going to be bringing down Coop Manor. So I kind of want to get your thoughts on, is there one of those guys you would sacrifice? Let's take Illing out of the equation because it's mainly reported that it's Sule or Hoisin. Would you use either one of those guys in a deal for Coop Manor to bring the price tag down? Hey, you're muted. Sorry. To be honest, I would like I would like to keep them both. Uh, I don't. Th I I think we can you know get something out of them and maybe even pump pump up their price tag more. But depending on sales in midfield, yeah, we can definitely use. We need a, a coup miners. So if I have to sacrifice one. There, there's a lot of questions coming up for it. My, my initial answer would be Sule. Um, but there, uh, there are a lot of other questions that will, might change my answer. I mean, if, if Bremer leaves, if Bremer stays, who's the manager next season? So what's the formation expected? Because Sule, I believe he can be very useful under a manager who plays with three attackers. And we don't have anyone for that position right now, not anyone who's performing. And if it's Mota who's doing great with youngsters and knows how to improve them, yeah, I want Sule in that team under Mota. If it's Conte, it's a 3-5-2, no, you can sell him. He wouldn't find any space to play. Not enough, at least. But we do have four tournaments, so we do need depth and those guys will get more chances. Honestly, if it can be someone else, that could be sacrificed for Cook Miners, I, I would I would consider it. A lot depends on, on what happens from now until like July. Yeah. How strong do you think Juve should be pushing for Coop Mainers in the first place? Uh let's set the limit, like a financial limit. I don't want them to go over fifty. Um, but if they keep performing the, the way they do, he, specifically him, I don't think we can get him for 50. Yeah. And 60, I don't know, that's what more than half our budget. We're going to have to wait and see because he is going to get some interest abroad. 
that's already being reported um, by good sources. That's going to push Atalanta to obviously try and get uh, the most. And they're very strong sellers. And they are they don't really budge. Their yeah. director has already come out uh, four days ago, five days ago, saying we do not have to sell Coop Mainers. We're fine. Coop Mainers yeah. said yeah. he is let the club know he wants to leave the director denied and said he said no such thing so they're just playing games and they're they're going to be tough to deal with that's atalanta's mo they don't it's, just get rid of guys like no. when there's valuable players on their roster they know how to get max and max dollars and they're going to try and do that with coop managers for me out of the links we have out there I think, you know, the the best thing about Coop Mainers is the fact that he could play anywhere in the midfield that you needed him to. Um, that's a big, big uh, feather in his cap. The fact he's very well-versed in Serie A, also huge. Also huge. Um, very familiar with the league, very familiar with the teams, um, the style, everything. He's having a strong, strong year. I think he's definitely, definitely an upgrade for us. I think if Juve tried to find somebody of the same kind of uh, characteristics and everything like that, I think it's going to be equally as hard, if not a little bit more challenging. The one thing that keeps being reiterated out there is that Coop Manners wants to remain in Italy. We have to use that to our advantage also. And it might come down to playing a little bit of a risky or dangerous game in terms of letting them kind of go after it or whatnot abroad and having Coop Mainers shut things down. We almost need that player's will, kind of the same we did with Locatelli and whatnot. We're kind of going to need him to make a stance to gain some type of leverage in this deal outside of moving guys we may not want to it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see though yeah uh, i kind of get the feeling like he's going to end up at tottenham or something like that aston villa may be one of those clubs that usually play in europe but have a bigger budget than us um, i think it's going to end up there because you know if, if it exceeds 50 million I mean, we can bring a host of other midfielders for that price. I, I wouldn't go as far. Yeah, we need him. Yeah, the, his familiarity with Serie A is, is important. His age is, is, is at his peak right now. Exactly the right moment to buy him. Now, I want to address something. Uh, who wrote it here? Uh, then Jay Softich. Oh, I guess that's Kostic. Okay, so uh, he said uh, would not buy anyone from Atalanta. Players usually overperform under Gasparini and they're well-organized tactics. Um, I agree to, to some extent. I think it's it's more an issue with the youngsters they sell. Um, and it's been like that at the beginning and then when Atalanta really started, you know, climbing up and gaining some more reputation. But I think it's kind of all over the place right now. Yeah. Some guys like perform after like two three seasons some do it immediately some never do it at all you can look at Kessie or Romero or Demiral or uh, Spinazzola Andrea Conti God knows what he's doing right now and all of those guys were good Gossens has completely disappeared I think he's he was partnering Bonucci in uh, what's their name can't even remember so I uh, yeah I think it's pretty random right now I don't know if I wouldn't buy from Atalanta, but they're not going to budge. They're not going to lower their price for Juve. And they're looking for the money. They're not looking for any deals of like three payments over three years. If Aston Villa can come in and pay 50 million cash right now, they'll say yes to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, develops there. I think we're going to need uh, him kind of stepping in and, and, uh, yeah, just given that uh, players will, because the reports do suggest Juve's found some type of agreement with him at $4.5 in salary, which is a good number for us. It's right in our wheelhouse. It's an increase for him. 
this would be good business for uh, for us moving forward. Uh, it's that price tag. It's Atalanta, and it's all up in the air. As far as some other targets, Calafiori and Hermoso and Lloyd Kelly seem to be the main targets at the back end of things. Calafiori, I would love. I would love to uh, get the deal done there. Hermoso, I think, presents a good opportunity as well as factoring in what could potentially go down with Bremer. Lloyd Kelly, Lloyd Kelly, I, I'm going to be honest, does really nothing for me. Uh, but Calafiori, Hermoso, I like. I really, really like. The Lloyd Kelly one for me is strange. Uh, he was getting the links around the same time as Tiago Jalo, who is also in the news today, stating that we could loan this guy out for next season, which is strange to me. Um, really, really strange, bizarre. I'm not really understanding it. I don't understand why this player can't go through a summer camp with us and we could figure out, try to get him up to speed to be able to utilize him next season. It's really, really strange to me. But out of these targets, hit him also as a free agent. I, I really like that move and I'd probably look at pulling the trigger on that one, especially with this kind of in the back of our minds, what could go down with uh, Bremer. And Calafiore, I'd love. But anything to say on these particular targets, Omer? I agree with uh, with Hermoso. Usually players who play under uh, Simone, they're good players. Uh, they, they understand tactics. They they have like the, the spirit, the green that we're always looking for. I have no problem. Um, now, yeah, he's a free agent, so that would be free. Yeah. Uh, who did you say before him? Calafiori. Oh, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Signed the guy. And yeah. Lloyd Kelly, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen him play. And if I did, I, I don't remember him. So it was probably nothing special. But maybe some of the names we hear are due to the finances. So Mane, uh, Juntoli is looking for some other options and not going for a bit of a higher profile. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, oh, Vedad, you got uh, you got caught by our friend Sauce GMP there on a fake post, my friend. <laughs> yeah, he uh, there was no source listed on this tweet. He totally sent it out trolling, and I couldn't believe the amount of attention it got. I think like can't remember the insane amount of views and likes and everything. People thinking it's real, hating on Juve. Um, but yeah, we, we, uh, talked about it actually on the Calcio review, uh, another channel I'm running. If any of you want kind of an overall view over, uh, Calcio and whatnot, but, uh, it was a total, total fake post. Uh, so don't buy into that. All right. Um, Calafiore would be a solid, solid addition. We're, we keep going through here. The Jalo one is very, very strange again, but Bremer, Bremer to Man U continues to be this uh, this uh, rumor going around. We know about the release clause that kicks in next season. There is this divide between fans there and believing that we can get more than set release clause this summer simply because Manchester United may want him to come in immediately. I still do not feel that we're going to get more than that tag. Um, how do you see it? Do you think Juve still holds this leverage to get more this summer? For Bremer? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Really? Yeah. I, I really think they can get more. And we've talked about it a few podcasts ago. I don't think he's leaving anyway this summer. I think if he does leave, it will be next summer. I, I can't see it. And looking at other moves across the line, teams have been able to get what that clause is. But I haven't seen a team sell someone for more than the clause they have in in play, even to speed things up or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it right. happening. I'd love to be wrong because I think 70 million is ridiculous in today's market, um, especially when we're talking about the best CB in Syria, I, I think it's ridiculous. I'd love to see us get more. I can't see it happening. I, I can't well, see it the happening. Clause, 
the clause is active from 2025. So that's next not, summer. Yeah, next summer. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, maybe they'll overpay now this summer because they're Man United. They have tons of money. They can just buy players for 90, for 90 million and sit them on the bench and then loan them and pay half their salary. We, we can't do that. So I wouldn't be surprised if they overpay for Bremer this summer to get him like 100 million. I, I don't know how much. Uh, but if there is a chance to get more out of that this summer, I don't think it will happen. Yeah, I just, um, I like I said, if we do in fact move him, I hope we do get above that release clause. I just don't, I don't see it happen. But I also don't see Juve moving him this summer for the same price that they could get next season. So I do think there could be negotiations there. What is probably the most upsetting about all of it is that we continue to hear Mason Greenwood links tied into this. And for me, don't even like, just stay away. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We've talked about this a lot. I don't need to get into it. I've had DMs and messages and WhatsApp messages saying, well, why, why? It does not need to be explained. Juve on a like just a flat out perception type scenario and yes, call it political, just should stay away and steer clear. That's it. Yeah. All right. You were That's on a track it. of remedying their reputation across Europe and signing him wouldn't help with that at all. Exactly. Just shut it down. Now, with when it comes to Max Allegri, and now we've got some interesting news with a bit of a shakeup coming in the office, all right? And you've got um, Mana apparently heading to Napoli. You've got Cherubini looking at heading to Parma. You're going to have a couple of Juntoli's guys coming in, and now we're hearing about this big shakeup. And it's got people on kind of both sides of the fence here. So I'm saying, like, are we a complete shit show that now these guys are also trying to get out? Or is this just all part of the plan? For me, I'm leaning towards this as part of the plan. And this is something that everybody kind of knew. And it all kind of makes sense. Cherubini, if you guys remember, when I threw out one of the YouTube shorts, one of those one minute vids on some news. And I gave you what I was kind of hearing behind the scenes around Juventus. This particular short, I believe, was like a month ago. And I said, from everything I'm hearing out of Turin, Cherubini is not in the know. He's not in that circle. All right? I was always told, you know, Elkin Calvo, um, Juntoli, and Mana at the time because Mana is his second. Okay? So for me, the Cherubini one, it, it just really, it's not surprising whatsoever. And I wouldn't look too intensely into it. For Mana, it seems to make sense. How long is he going to sit in behind Juntoli? Because he had, he's been running things with Next Gen. He had come in, interim. They bring in Juntoli. You knew it was going to be Juntoli's show. Um, and it just makes sense for him if he has an opportunity to go take that next step. I don't think he's getting that next step at Juventus for quite some time. It was an interim thing. So this makes sense. I don't think there's anything more to it. I don't think there's crazy things going on behind the scenes that has led to this. I think it's business as as usual. Omer, what do you think? I think they've known about it for for some time. I don't think it just came out of the blue right now. We're just hearing about it right now. Um, yeah, Mana doesn't strike me as the type of guy who wants to be like second in command behind someone. He's climbing up the ranks. He's young. It's a good time for him. And and Napoli is like it's a good project because it's an offer that it's hard to refuse. And uh, because they do have money, they they do play in the Champions League every season. They usually like stay in the top half of Serie A. So it, it doesn't. I don't think it go like to. Uh, Letcher or something to be their sporting director if an offer from Napoli is, is actually in place. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. And there are guys coming in the other way. Juntoli's guys, so he's going to get the reins 
to control Juve, which kind of explains the everything that happened with him since he signed. And it wasn't completely him, and it is going to be. And, and Cherubini, yeah, we, we knew he's out. I mean, we knew he's not going to stay. It was just part-time until they figure all their bullshit out with all the investigations and stuff. So he was the one who stayed. That's about it. I'm not going to make any fuss about it because it's just yeah, not a sporting director. The names looking to come in, same names we heard last summer in Pompilio, um, and that's one of Juntoli's guys. So I also think, like, we've heard a lot of rumors as of late about Juntoli, and this was coming from one, maybe two of the top three guys, that Juntoli's still not in total control. Maybe this makes that final push for me. It's the final sign that, we're going that route. It is all coming into place. It is going to very, very soon become June Tully's show. And maybe Juventus was doing this from the perspective that they didn't want to dump, even though they kind of somewhat did, dump this huge mess on his plate. But they kept a guy like Mana in there. Cherubini was still kept around to kind of help because it is a mess that he didn't create. So he had help and assistance in terms of trying to make things right, whatnot. But it, we're getting closer to getting out of this financial uh, deficit. As that gets closer, we get closer to taking the shackles off Juntali. And I think this is just one of the steps in making that move to it becoming his show, which it is always going to be. Um, and and that's, how, that's how I'm looking at it. You know, in terms of this as well, though, the theory continues around Allegri potentially getting a different role within the club. And the club may be looking at trying to move on to a guy, as today we hear from Mirko Di Natale, all right, there has been no discussions with Max. The latest results do play into everything. Malta contacts are concrete are continuous for Mirko Di Natale. So, maybe this presents a way for them to not miss out on a guy that appears they want. Appears they want to set something up with Mota and he could be a long-term solution at that role. They can free up Allegri to another role. They have to take his massive salary, still maintain it, but find another place. This could kind of... This could kind of make things easier. Max kind of still gets some type of, you know, respect out of it and respectful and amicable kind of solution. Not a sacking, not all this that maybe the club doesn't want to do. I really I really can't get into. We'll get into that in a little bit more. But maybe this one is a way to go. I just, I'm not so sure if I believe it. What do you think? What about Allegri staying in a different role? Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, just cut the cord. Cut the cord. I get the, the financial aspect of it and like not firing him, but promoting him. But if I'm a new manager at Juve, I don't want to be, you know, overshadowed and have the, the ex manager over my shoulder looking, talking to management, either criticizing or I, I don't know what he's doing, but come on, let him go. Yeah, I don't think Allegri wants that type of role. I think he likes coaching eventually. Um, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Just cut the cord and that's it. Uh, it was fine. It was fun while it lasted, but new guy, new atmosphere, new management. Let, let give If Mota comes in, give him a first start. And if it's Conte, no way he agrees to that type of deal. <laughs> no way. Throw him off the, off the highest window. All right, so I'm going to put a poll in here. And it's something that's being posted out there. And people do believe it. It's been put in the news. Does today and the result make or break Max Allegri's time with Juventus? And finishing up the season, etc. And Omar... Fire away with your thoughts. I mean, is there anything to salvage at this point? 
Like uh, even a Coppa Italia would make the past three seasons better, or is it just like I don't know a small consolation prize, but nothing more? I. But in terms of finishing think... up this season, these eight games, we've been saying for a while now, like they should cut. I don't the court think anything. And... I don't you know, think anything can save it. I think that it's it's done. Three years, not even reaching second place. I th- no, I think I'm I not... think you're missing you're missing the question. The final okay. eight games of the season, as we've been talking about, even getting an interim in. The latest news reports have suggested that today's game can have weight, can have bearing on them making a call and not finishing this season with Max. Do you think that's the case? No, no, I, I find it hard to believe. As much, as much as it's logical to say that and to act that way, I think they're missed the window, probably their last, uh, the last uh, international break was the opportunity to bring in someone and not throw him like yeah. into the deep end. Yeah. So I don't think it will affect anything. Uh, I seriously doubt they'll fire him now. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I put the post out yesterday and I said, I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have already. Um, and they had a perfect opportunity with that international break. It's gone by. And I really feel that this today's game won't do it. I know what media is saying and that it will, but I, I really, really strongly doubt that. I know uh, that I have some guys in uh, Turin at the moment and they're talking as if it does and that there's a lot of talks about something going down, but it just, you know, I, I can't see it because we passed a prime opportunity, but at the same time, has a lot really made sense as far as timing around Juventus and the decisions they make and what they're doing. Does like a lot of it actually make clear, definitive sense? Not well, always, I- not really. So I wouldn't be surprised. But for me, like my biggest concern right now, and it, it, it's the question of how far is management willing to go before they cut the court? Now with Bologna, two points. We got fortunate with a Roma draw against uh, Lecce and whatnot. Atalanta has a makeup game to play, but it's like, how far are they willing to push this thing? That's what I can't really fathom. In terms of this poll so far, you have 44% saying, yes, today will make or break Max Allegri with Juve as far as finishing the season. 56% believe no. So it's a very, very close bit. But for me, I, I feel like that time is passing. I'm just left wondering how far are they willing to let this thing go? Okay, so let's go. Let's start with what you said earlier. Uh, about the, the timing at Juve, I feel that that's true towards uh, the previous management. I think the guys right now are very calculated, and because they are very calculated, they're not going to send Max home now because it would cost them more money. Those are financial guys. They look at the financial aspect, and there's eight games to ride it out. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a weird question, but are we in like... A, crisis mode that we, if Max doesn't do better I mean is there no time to save the season that we have to do it now or is eight games enough and because today is a Coppa Italia game I mean yeah, yeah you, you can win it you, but losing it wouldn't you know make us miss Europe if he misses the Fiorentina games that's seven games left I don't think those guys will do it yeah I'm uh I, I really find it hard to believe they'll do it, actually. Yeah, and, and like I say, as I don't believe today will make or break anything with Max Allegri moving forward, I still say this that today is actually massive in terms of finishing the season out. Because of the fact it's in Copitalia, it's one of two legs, 
and it presents an opportunity for you guys to hit a hard reset and get out of it. Another retiro, okay? But if nothing comes out of this game, like I kind of go back to what RB said there is in terms of this poll question, does it make or break anything for Max? And should it? Yes. But does it? No, because we don't have this feeling like management is going to act because they haven't up until this point. But if you can't get something now, that video we posted on socials yesterday out of that podcast we did with you, myself, and Lex. And Lex, it, the video is Lex speaking to the fact that even an intern like some type of change is going to be required to change something going down the stretch, or we do in fact risk not reaching Champions League, which is an absolute must. Qualification is an absolute must right now for Juventus. Um, you just, this whole battle on interim and a lot of fans saying, well, no, you can't, like it's not going to do anything. You have to change the players. You can't change the players right now, but if Max can't get at least these players showing energy, effort, enthusiasm, that's the only thing you can attempt. And you you can't leave it be for the sake of there being multiple problems because there is multiple problems, but you only have the power to control some of those problems. So it doesn't mean you just sit there and let it fall by the wayside. Like this collapse is already of epic proportions. Like you can't continue this this way. Well, energy, look, I... enthusiasm, drive, we're like that. There has to be a motivational aspect that comes from the coaching before we even talk about players' individual performances. And if that's not even there, and Retiro's all this, I can't stand by and watch, man. Like, I can't. But there are still some combating making an interim change. Look, um, I really find it hard to believe that they haven't talked about it internally. I, I mean, there's no chance they're sending Max out there every match with the knowledge that, yeah, this might cost you a job. No, no, this might cost you a job. They have talked about it, and they definitely have talked about it. And he knows what the what their plan is. They know what their plan is. I assume, like you write it out. I guess they told him you write it out. We won't fire you, but you have to make Champions League and you know do something in the Coppa Italia. But I, I doubt. Even if he is at risk of getting sacked uh, after this match or against Fiorentina, he knows it beforehand. It wouldn't come out of the blue to him and to the management. Yeah. It, it, the There's enough out there for us to see. And no one, I've spoken about this a lot. Like, Skira has been so good for like four years now. Oh, okay. guys, solid. Yeah, like he is on point. And he's been the best. Flat out, he's been the best. There has been discussions with coaches dating back to last summer. Hitting this point right now, like, I don't see any way they can't. They can't be looking at it. If you're looking at Max and how he's he's maneuvered, what makes me unsettled is the fact that if you look at the actions and we go back to that kind of gesture with guys like Rabio, guys like Allegri and the laughing and the smiling and whatnot. Like that could be a couple things. Like maybe he knows his time is up and you know, he, he's kind of like, maybe he decided his time is up. Maybe That's he's kind of, so to speak, thrown in the towel. Like, I, I don't know, but maybe just maybe he's also too comfortable. And shit like that is coming out. I don't know. This situation around Juventus can have us going and doing circles inside our heads. And it does. You have people in the chat suggesting that they wouldn't be surprised if we do ex 
extend him in the run and he stays beyond. I really can't see that. I can't see that, you guys. I think right now, I, and I've listed this a while ago on a video, there's too many things happening and going on for a change not to go down. Um, yeah, and they, they have to be planning for the future. I mean, yeah. they're not just acting based on whatever happens and they and then they react. I yeah. seriously doubt it. I mean, that's Juventus. This, this is still management that gets a lot of money. They are planning what they do, and they do have plan B and plan C for whatever happens. Yeah. Um, but they're not just, you know, gut reactions and just doing based on what happened last night. Yeah. They do plan ahead. But I do think when we speak of this current run, this is beyond a, a gut or knee-jerk reaction. Like, Oh, that's super surprising. This is uh, this is uh, like a low. Well, ride. maybe maybe they made their, deci their decision even before that. Maybe they already knew Max is not going to continue after this season anyway. Yeah. Maybe that's part of what caused the collapse. I don't know. I, I, that's a guess. But everything is possible. I mean, we don't really know. Yeah, and you you talk about. Um this board uh, doesn't fill me with confidence. I've been very vocal about this, but, uh, and you guys have seen me on a rant out here talking about it, that these guys, they are, and, and my fear is that right now, they're looking at everything too much so to the point of the financials that it's blinding them from the rest, the rest that needs to be looked at. The only way you could defend us waiting this long, going through this to this degree, is in fact the financials. These guys are temps. Scanavino and Ferrara are temps. They are not footballing minds. These guys are legal and financial guys. That is it. Okay? At some point, guys that run the footballing aspect have to actually kick in and just say look you want to do it this way it just can't continue because if we drop the next game you have to have to blow it up it would be it's already to a point where it's pushing it. the <laughs> yeah, envelope exactly. to that's the that you know, feeling it's all was ready here, to like, that point. Yeah, that, that feeling was like four matches ago. I don't yeah. know how to call it now. I don't have any word for it. You know, and I've had uh, people throw in uh, inter-situation a year ago, whatever I mean. It's like, I get it. They had four losses out of five games. They had one point out of those uh, potential 15 points. But those games were... Those games Definitely. were one goal games in the league. And the majority of them, they actually deserve to get results based on the way they were playing. They were also in other competitions. They also won Supercopa Copa Italia. They were also still doing strong in European. Like, it's not apples to apples. Like, That's a situation I'd accept. You've exactly. Been in the league, but going to the Champions League final, winning it, two other exactly. Titles, you're yeah, advancing fun. in Europe. You're advancing in Coppa Italia. You've won a Super Cup. It's like it's completely different scenario. And how you are playing in those games because those literally those losses were almost all of them one goal games. I think only one of them was not a one goal game. So their scoring went down uh, out of nowhere and. Yeah, they were losing like one nils, two ones. Like, it's it's not apps to apps. They were still playing good ball and should have been getting those results. Outside of the Napoli game during this run, we have not played a good game. The Atalanta one, I'll say, okay, decent. But outside of those two games, no, it's been it's been brutal. It's been dire. Oh, it's, it's been not awful. the same. I mean, just it's not go the watch same. that. Verona and Udinese matches, that's shambolic. Udinese at home was, I think that was the worst one. Oh, man. It, it, it was crazy. So for me, I have no idea what's going to happen. But, you know, this poll is like 50-50 right now as the votes well, have come in. 
I'm starting I, to really believe Max already knows he's out. I, I'm starting to feel that way too. Um, I would be, to say I'd be shocked if things remain the same is a complete uh, understatement. I I really, really can't see it. But who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, and, it's not, and it's not to say that because he knows he's out, then he's just not trying hard enough because... I wouldn't say Max is not a professional. He is a professional, and I believe he will do the best the best he can while he's in the office, even if he knows he's getting sacked. So any yeah. Allegri fans out here, it's not saying that Max is unprofessional. It's just he knows what his, fu- what his future is. Yeah. And uh, RB saying he thinks he actually knows he's safe. Huh. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You guys... Today, it's Juve Lazio yeah. again. Coppa Italia semi-final, first leg. I talked about this. It's massive going down the stretch. If we have any hope, if the board has any hope of keeping things the same and it turning around, has to start here. Absolutely has to start here. One of the things that has really pissed me off during this stretch is another thing... If I'm going to lay out the reasons, the reasons I'm upset because we can all agree that individual errors from players are happening. The roster needs work. We can all agree on that. But the aspects from a coaching perspective that I'm not seeing that piss me off are, number one, we seem to really, really lack any type of motivation and have during this entire stretch outside of maybe a game or two, okay? Um, the second is the lack of game plan coming through in these games, you know, and not really understanding what our opponent is seemingly going to do when we have no other competitions. Like we are literally have one game in front of us each week and we seemingly go in so unprepared. These are two things. I am 1,000% looking at in today's game. Is this team motivated? Are they fired up? Are they coming out with a good attitude and approach? Because that's a third one. Attitude and approach has been far too negative in this run when you're trying to snap out of a brutal, brutal slump. So I'm definitely looking at all of that. You just played Lazio. You better have a game plan set in that actually takes advantage and can hurt them. You have to have a good attitude approach, okay? I don't want to sit back at home, first leg, go semi, get after this goddamn game. And I want to see the team motivated. If these things fail to be seen, you, in keeping our poll question kind of in the mix here, you have to shut it down because stop sacrificing points in the table. Even an interim should be able to just give everybody this, this relief or just this break, this fresh breath of fresh air and just be able to at least try and say, hey, you know what? He wasn't the entire problem, but he's taking the fall. It's time for you guys to man up, we need to get the job done. And that has happened a ton in sports, okay? And you have to do it sometimes. We may be at that point. But those are the three key things I'm looking at in this game. Omar? Well, I would like to see some innovation. I mean, okay, Lazio, they didn't play their strongest lineup in the last match. And Luis Alberto, I don't remember even if he came in or he came in late. Gonduzi, Immobile, all those guys were on the bench. And they are going to play today, I guess. And it was Tudor's first game, and he probably had this game in mind. So they are going to come prepared. And we, like you said, we've just played them. I want to see some innovation, some other ideas when stuff doesn't work. You can't control the game. Don't do the same thing of just kicking it upfield and hoping Vlahovic will manage to control it. I don't want to see Chiesa creates an opportunity by running from the halfway line. 
every goddamn time I want to see him get, you know, get the ball close to the area and has opportunity to do something. And substitutions, I mean, it's basically been 3-5-2 until we can see the goal and then just throw every attacking outlet we have and try to make something out of it. Like, I want to see a more managed game. I don't feel like the games are managed. I think they're just reactionary. Yeah, you see, I'm at the point where, and I've said this through even, I think our good run, our good first round of play is kind of evidence of it. Half of the battle is hard work, determination, and drive. Once you lose that, I really don't think tactics set up anything is going to change it like and that's what i'm not seeing i'm not seeing that energy i'm not seeing yeah. that enthusiasm and i feel like he's run dry out of ideas because at least when when we're not playing and we knew we knew we talked about this yesterday that we weren't playing the absolute best we knew there was more there even during our successful run this season but what was carrying us through there was the guy's attitude, their their energy, their their drive. They were doing everything they possibly could. I think there was other shortcomings in terms of at that point, we should have been looking more uh, strategically at what we were doing. We should have been working more in terms of the game plans and everything. However, right now, right now, I think the biggest detriment to us right now has been the approach and the energy and yeah if so we don't have points, that today yeah so your points were more uh, about the the players themselves and how they perform on the pitch so i chose the the the, ma the managing way but well i disagree I, I that i disagree correct. that energy effort drive doesn't come from coaching because no, you have to motivate it does it does come from coaching yeah. but i but i would i think they just gave up on that i mean of counting on allegri to give them that that backwind to drive them forward so that might be up to them um so both are true in my opinion we need to see that and we need to see some a bit of tactical adaptation to what's going on in the game and not just reacting the same way that we did because it obviously doesn't work anymore we got yeah. figured out teams know how to close us down and if they want to let us control the ball then we'll control the ball and get like one shot on target maybe and earlier in the season we got a lot of shots on target we actually third in the league for shots yeah uh, but most of them came earlier in the season because like we're not saying, you know, we had luck uh, all 50 50 games went on our side that's it luck but you know I'm not disagreeing, but I will say you do also have to create your fortune. You do have to create luck as well. I mean, you're not going to get a rebound bounce and bag a goal if you're not pushing and you're not working and you're not doing everything in your power to get up there. So it's it, it's uh, it's one of those things right now. We don't have anything to even generate some good fortune on our side because we are very, very negative. And uh, look at old Raf, our old friend here, jumping in here. How is this manager still in a job? We are keeping tabs on Raf from afar, and he's doing fantastic we're, things. We're uh, speculating. We're with speculating. his project we there, man, no uh, we miss you. We'll have to get you back sometime, brother, but uh, all the best. And, yes, we are keeping tabs on what you're doing, and uh, keep doing your thing, man. Keep doing your thing. Love seeing you in here. Drop a like. Let's go. Everybody drop a like. I, uh, yeah, I just, I'm looking for, I think when you go this far on a bad run, Omer, I feel like you have to um, just go back to basics and simplify everything. And I think, like, they, they just really... Before we get into uh, tactics, setups, and all this, like you just have to have these guys willing to go out there and fight and win those battles and do everything. If Max can't bring that today, yeah, you, oh, you that, really have to. You really have those to. Those are those are fundamentals. I mean, exactly. You, Mark you don't coming need in a hot tough saying coach to do that. today doesn't make or break. It's broken already. Ah, yeah. sad but true. 
In the words of yeah. uh, Metallica, "Sad but true." All right. You know it's sad but true. Great song, by the way. Great love song. That song. All right. Oh, now, I love that song. Probable eleven for Juventus. Oh, shock me! Uh, because we did have a storm the barn coming in from our uh, good friend Swarit here, and um, I think the chat was going so strong that we had passed it. But oh no, here we go. Is the away goal rule still there in the Coppa Italia? I believe it is not. Would we start a front three of Kiesa, Vlaovic, and Yildiz? We spoke about this yesterday. 3-4-2-1 is what we would personally go with. Okay? It's less of this massive or drastic change from what we were doing with 3-5-2 finds a way to get three attackers on the pitch. Just go with it. What we're expected to see? 3-5-2. Perin, Gatti, Bremer, Danilo, Cambiaso, McKenny, Locatelli, Rabio, Kostic, Vlaovic, Chiesa. So, so that's basically our let's call it top 11 from our good run in the season. Yeah. Those were the guys. Um, I, I don't know what to expect anymore. It doesn't matter who you play there. If uh, we're going with the three-five-two and the same guys, yeah, luck will probably have to play a part in here as well. Yeah, I, I think the way you set up this lineup, um, these are your guys. They were your main guys through the good run you really just have to get the job done. Like there's no if ands or buts about it. I mean, I know that we're a little one dimensional in that midfield the way it is, but it doesn't matter. They have to find a way. You guys are the key guys of this team. This is a pivotal match in terms of swinging momentum back in our favor somewhat. And then getting back to city action, you guys have to find a way you have to find a way. And I have really no problems with this other than the fact I would have probably liked to see a 3-4-2-1. And I think McKenney should have been the outside right. I would have played Cambiasso on the outside left. I think that would have helped mixing up with Chiesa. And I think we would have uh, been able to mirror, exactly mirror, what we should see from Lazio, which is also a 3-4-2-1. And have guys better set up to uh, take away some of those easy options in the middle that they had to distribute to and then turn things around on us. So having that extra forward in there should close those gaps down a little bit uh, rather than the flat three in the midfield. But we will see how it plays out. This is more than enough to get the job done. Again, we have to get half of the battle sorted out, which is no doubt the approach and no doubt the mentality going into this thing and the right attitude. So we will see if they bring it. This is time, everybody. And yeah, get your Storm the Barn questions in. Fire away. This is time for the prediction challenge. You guys know the drill. Final score, two tiebreakers. Time to put our money where our mouth is and uh, see how we're feeling. By the way, there was a bet placed yesterday from myself and Omar. And Omar, it appears you're going to win the bet, which means... And yes, that's right. We made a bet involving Anthony while he was not even on the show. But Omar, you're going to gain control. <laughs> and, and, and either way, he's losing. I mean, no matter who wins, the result for him is the same. So Omar is going to have control over Anthony's profile picture for the next week on X. To be honest, I don't even remember what was what the bet was about. What did I bet on? You have control over his profile picture on no, X but, for the next week. But it why? was. It was, are we going to see a 3-4-2-1 with three forwards or 3-5-2? So 3-5-2 it is, and there you go. Prediction time, everybody. Final score, two tiebreakers. Omar, kick us off. How are you feeling today? So I said yesterday at the end of the podcast that I still feel like this match will be our turning point to end the season. You know, not good, but at least in top four and maybe Coppa Italia. And I feel like this is the chance that I think they will do it. So I'm going with a uh, 2-0 win to you today. 
Uh, uh, sorry, two two one. No, two nil. Two nil. Two zero. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And let's go with Vlahovic gets one. Eight seven, maybe on penalties. <laughs> um, Vlahovic gets one, and finally McKenny let him get one. Yeah, McKenny. Kenny finally getting on the board. I'm going to say that um, uh, while we talk about, you know, we want the attitude, we want the approach right and everything, and this is a big, big game to kind of swing things for us. I think Juve wins today. I think it's 2-1. I don't think it gives us any of these positive or good feelings, and the way that we get the job done today gives us good vibes going through the rest of Syria. I don't think it's too, I don't think it brings us enough of the positive signs that we need going through the rest of these league games. Unfortunately, I would love for this team to have a strong, like three nil showing and show us and come out there, but they need to earn that trust back. They need to, you know, reinstill that belief uh, amongst the fan base, in my opinion. So, uh, I just want to go I, I to do sleep. Think, not I angry. do think we get through this, though. I do think we get through yeah. this with a 2-1. Um, Vlaovic, I think, will be key. I think Vlaovic will have a strong game. I do put him on uh, as a goal scorer as well. And I think that uh, Cambiasso finds, uh, finds the back of the net for me. I'm looking at these guys uh, as well, too, because I do think that they are potentially two guys that – Juve's looking to really move forward with. And Vlaovic, after the ridiculous, ridiculous sending off and suspension that he had to face, I'm really going to look at him in terms of the attitude, in terms of the drive, in terms of guiding these guys in this game. Cambiasso, a little bit of a dust-up and a shake-up with Max on the sideline their last game and everything. I'm going to look at him as well in terms of reactions. So those are some key things that I'm looking at uh in this one outside of that we just need the guys to be solid but danilo danilo is our captain he was one of the worst in my opinion last game and i have been calling him out for a while now in terms of absolutely losing any type of consistency which he had going for him um, and was one of the big things why i sided with him in a lot of discussions, he has to have a good game for Juventus today. Has to. His, his performances, um, they have affected Juve. Because Juve, we were good defensively when both Bremer and Danilo, uh, they were at the top of their game to some part of the season. And I feel like Bremer has stayed there, but Danilo has dropped off. And Bremer can't do it alone. All of Danilo's performances and everything he did just disappeared. I have no idea why. I mean, last game, yeah, okay, we played him as a right back. Okay, he's not a right back anymore. That that was pretty obvious, and we didn't gain the the better performances of him as a center back. So we, it's kind of a lose lose situation. But he yeah. really needs to step it up because Bremer can't do it alone, and Gatti is Gatti. I mean, yeah, I didn't want him as the last line of defense. Now, I'm going to uh, bring something up, all right? So, you guys, as you know, we are the official voice and channel of the uh, Juventus official fan clubs in North America. There are official fan clubs scattered all across the world that all do incredible work at bringing us closer to our club. Today, we see a sign of that, all right? So today we get a sign of that, and it's going to be epic, and it's yet another perk to add to the list of joining one of these fan clubs, all right? John Grow, head of official fan clubs North America, will be raising and waving the flag for Juventus at today's game. Him and his son, Gianluigi, will be given high fives as the club enters and everything. This is something that is going to be opened up. He is the first to do this, but this is something that is going to be opened up and available to official fan club members taking in the games 
at Allianz Stadium, all right? This is epic. This is awesome, man. Um, the fact that fan club members could be able to do this at games coming up, have their children with them, giving players high fives as they enter the pitch. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right, so awesome to see. And I'm happy that the club is finally starting to add perks while they're at the stadium, all right? So that is cool. And I hope that uh, Juve repays them. Okay, it repays them with a good performance and obviously a victory today. All right, we need to see that now. Storm the barn. Let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. We got them uh, listed up here. Let's see. We've got uh, one coming in from Swari. We tackled. Now we got to get to uh, Forza UV. Okay, best player, most underrated, most overrated, and worst. In this Juve squad. All right. All right. Let's go down the list together, Omar. So who's our best player in your opinion? My, and you're muted. Oh, for me, easily Bremer. I was going to say it's Bremer. It's hands down That's Bremer. In all yeah. aspects. Performance-wise, consistency, importance, Bremer. Yeah. Most underrated player. Hmm. I, I underrated. I feel like most of them are overrated. That's why it's hard to pick someone <laughs> who's underrated. Uh, yeah. Under so most underrated, I'm gonna say. Oh, yeah, it, it's kind of tough to say most underrated when they're all kind of... <laughs> kind of overrated, yeah. Yeah, most underrated. I, I think I'd give it to Ealing. And maybe it's because Kostic is that bad, but I do think he's he's done well. He had some mistakes here and there, yeah, who doesn't? But it's hard to pick anyone else because we have talked about McKenny is actually being one of our better players this season. So I don't think he's underrated. Yeah. Rabio is having a shocker. Lucatelli is meh on and off. He had some games. I it, it, It's funny. Like I'm literally sitting there thinking about it and I would have to agree. Okay. Um, that I'm going to go with Illing Jr. Just because I think he's underrated in a sense. He should have been getting more minutes and he actually does well yeah. you know somewhat when he's coming on not always but maybe there um underrated is very very hard uh there is a shout here for Chesney. a couple shouts i don't think he's underrated i think most most of us think he's a good goalkeeper i don't think he's underrated i mean if yeah. anyone thinks he's he's awful then then say it because i haven't met anyone who thought he was bad now that bad. Uh, who is the most overrated? Mm. <laughs> I would probably say Rabio hmm. based of based on this season. You know, considering salary expectations after last season, uh, we thought we really needed him. He, his best ability was his availability, as Tony likes to say, and it wasn't even there this season. So. He was injured quite a lot. He missed quite a lot of games. Um, this, I, get uh... Why, uh, I get why some would say Lucatelli. Um, actually, hard not to agree. At this stage, I expected more from him. I'd have to go with Chiesa. This season, hmm. our most overrated. That's also this. a good answer. I, I'd, I'd have to say Chiesa. And it pains me. I love the guy. Want, it, want him to succeed. I think he's our most overrated right now. Um, he he has to be way more impactful, influential than he has been. The decisions are frustrating to see. This whole positional thing, you guys know where I stand. It, it just it hasn't been enough. So for me, it's there. And uh, I'll take it, Swari. I know. I know it was coming. Uh, I'm going with uh, Chiesa, and to be fair, he's got a lot of shouts in there. It seems to be Locatelli and Chiesa are uh, 
are the uh, the main ones there. Now, the last one, worst player in this squad. Worst player in this squad this season, easily Kostic. Yeah, I, the guy's been shambolic, especially with the amount of minutes he got, and his age, his experience. Yeah, he plays. He's he might be the only one who plays his favorite position. Yeah, he came from Frankfurt for from a three five two. So, yeah, Kostic for me. I expected a whole. I would say it's work. between three guys, um, and it would be Kostic, it would be Keane, and it would be Maretti for the worst. Um, and I'm probably gonna. Uh, it's hard to not agree with because it's been a such a sport a sore spot and based on what he was doing last season it's got to be uh it's got to be Kostic. i got to say he's he is the the worst um yeah cuz cuz miretti's young i mean I, I, it feels unfair to give it to like a 21 year old yeah um, keen started the season as the as a third choice and yeah. he basically still is if everyone is healthy. Yeah. Um, but Kostic has been a mainstay in the starting lineup. And I don't know, maybe two times I've said, oh, good, that's a good move. That's a good decision. Most of it is just, you know, wayward passes, crosses without looking and not offering anything, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Vidad saying Miretti needs that loan more than Omer needs a cigarette. <laughs> there you go. There oh, you go. Oh man, that that do you have any idea how much I smoked in this last run? You Juventus are literally <laughs> shortening shortening my life. And, literally, yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna get to uh Pierre's here. If we sell Bremer for seventy million, bought Calafiori for thirty and had a little left over from more Mercado, would you be upset with that result? If we sold Bremer upset. for 70 mil, we have just over 30 mil capital, uh, which pretty much is absorbed in the Calafiori mm -hmm. move. Um, I, I'd like to bring in Calafiori, but does he completely replace Bremer? I don't think so in terms of uh, our squad and everything. So I'd... <sighs> I think Bremer, give us time to prepare. If it's next season and it's at the 70 mil, slightly more capital, still still grossly undervalued based on today's market. Um, it's not the be-all, end-all. Like if we shifted that to Calafiori, picked up Hermoso on a free, it's not the end of the world. I'll say that. Omer? I would agree, but I would add that adjust your expectations yeah if, if those are guys like califiori and hermoso those are good signings maybe yeah. better in like three four years so don't expect to be competing with with the best and uh, you know being angry we didn't make the champions league semi-finals yeah and um, that's one and someone who was it said uh, ryan said i'm becoming sorry I i'm salted <laughs> I'm boring, I'm smoking. Yeah. I'm the uh, one in my family without glasses, so that might come. I gotta soon. I gotta say, like uh in terms of these guys, the one thing about Bremer is that he locks down the top guys so well. So well. And that plays into Omar and the um expectations and with these other guys that would be coming in. Bremer is one of the best at that, so We'll see uh, what uh, ends up happening. Miran coming in here. Uh, how do you feel about Danilo's recent performances? Did he get the armband too early? So we talked about this uh, just literally a few minutes ago. We're not happy with his performances, and he's had to pick it up. He's had to do more. He's lost his consistency. In terms of the armband, I don't know who the hell you'd really give it to because I don't see any true leaders, if I'm being completely honest. Um, Chesney, you don't see it on the pitch, uh, but you get it in terms of words on in an interview here and there. That's not enough, uh, for me. Uh, in terms of performances, I don't think anybody's leading by example to a degree of being a captain. I think 
Bremer is the only one performance wise that you could say deserves an armband, but he's not a leader and you could see it because he's not vocal enough. And there are still um, a lot of uh, lack of communication at times at the back. So he shouldn't really get it either. I don't see an out and out guy. I'd get the captaincy to. I'm going to kind of switch a question because I said something going into next season that I'd like to see is scrap the captaincy in terms of what the hell we're doing with uh, tenure and all this. When I, let the players vote on it, I say. Let them decide who their leader is. And I want to say this, hypothetically, it's all speculative because we wouldn't know, but if they did that, do you still think it would be Danilo? I think it will. Um, Max has like he, Max does it based on seniority, so that doesn't make a lot of sense either. Um, but we've seen Tech as captain, we've seen Rabio as captain. I think we even saw Locatelli as captain, and I, those are not the guys. Like Danilo is like the most suited out of these crop of players. But to be honest, none of them is like the leader we want or need. Yeah. And I feel like we don't have a captain right now, and it shows on the field. The lack of leadership, we've talked about it a million times. You don't need the, the captain armband to be a leader. Yeah. I think at the time and when he received it and whatnot, it made a lot of sense for Danilo, to be honest. And it is what it is, but I just think in general... But Captains is... are tested when the chips are down. Yeah, and I just don't think that, uh, you know, we have anybody else that can clearly easily take that captaincy away from him. So it just kind of is what it is. Um, here's a fun one. Michael Razzo always has the fun ones, man. Love this question, all right? And we're going to have fun. I know Omer's going to like this one as well. And uh, it is top five Metallica songs. Oh, you got to so I'm going to definitely put Master of Puppets in there. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, I can I can put the whole album there. And I'm going to put Master, Master of Puppets. I'm going to put Four Horsemen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Four Horsemen, Master the of mechanics. Puppets. <laughs> what? The Mechanics. When yeah. Dave Mustaine left Metallica, then he wanted to prove he's better. So on his on their first album, he they played a song called The Mechanics, which is the Four Horsemen, a song he wrote. Yeah. But like two times faster. It's not yeah. really a song. It's just a short skill. <clears throat> no. Four Horsemen. Master of Puppets. I always love and will love For Whom the Bell Tolls for me. I absolutely love that song. One. One is epic. Epic. One is a masterpiece. Yeah. Those and... <sighs> I don't want, man, it's so hard not to leave so many beauties out of there. Maybe Seek and Destroy as a fifth there for me. That's a great one. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to choose just from the first four albums. Oh my God. And... Fade to Black. Jesus. Yeah. Epic. Epic. I went pretty hard on all mine. Very, yeah. very, very strong. Yes. Yeah, so man. I'd go with, I have to pick five. Nothing else so matters. That's a good show too. That's actually my least favorite song. I mean, I loved it, but I not anymore. It's very long, six minutes. And because I'm a drummer and a guitarist, I, I've learned a lot of their songs. I know to play on drums most of Metallica songs. Uh, so I'd go by that list of what songs I enjoyed playing most. Um, so yeah, I think Master of Puppets takes the fourth spot. Um, Unforgiven was a big one for me. That was like my entrance to Metallica. <laughs> yes, I'm Christ, why are you coming in <laughs> hot there? Oh. Uh, yeah, so Master of Puppets, Unforgiven, Sad But True. Sad uh, But True, yes. Yes. Yeah. One. All oh, Ride the Lightning. Oh, my God. Love yeah, Ride the Lightning, lightning man. Sick riff, sick riff. Um, oh, it's, uh, it's very hard to choose. Very hard. Um, Harvester of Sorrow is one of my top favorites, and Whiplash. Yeah. 
those were kind of my my gateways to Metallica. Yeah. Man, there's so there's so many. So all oh, the fifth one. Okay, so Vincenzo, the fifth one was Welcome Home Sanitarium. Great song. Sanitarium. Great, song. great. I song. like oh what's that song in Drop D from Master of Puppets? The thing that should not be what top ten, definitely. Yeah. Oh man, that's uh that's good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fun talking about music here and there. Battery, um, yeah, hard to leave music, battery out. Yeah, Metallica lost it here. I was looking at the album thing and then got some here. <laughs> Where do we stand on Conte? Now we got room for a couple more here. Okay, so uh, where do we stand on Conte now? So for me, um, I said this yesterday. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. The case for him is very, very strong. Um, it's very, very strong. Uh, the case that you can make for Conte, there's really nothing more to add than to the fact that I think in terms of what we're missing and what we could utilize, he's got a very, very strong case uh, to come back. Culture, identity, stimulus, energy, motivation. These are all things we lack. These are all things he is, he is uh, renowned for. The, the case is there. I'm open to it. I didn't, I don't want a Conte return, but it makes sense. It, it, it mm. does make sense. You know? um, yeah. So we've talked about it in length yesterday. Um, yeah. I'm all for Conte. I'm also all for Moda. I, I, it's like, I want them both. Yeah. Mainly because I don't want anyone else to have one of them. For, Either way, it's going to be awful. That's a great point. And it's also for different reasons, though, which is like this yeah. crazy thing because it's like... But they both feel like they suit what we're trying to do. Yeah, like Malta would come in and it would be fresh ideas. It would be a fresh outlook mm -hmm. on football and what happens on the pitch. It would be good for the young guys. Conte could literally send half of these guys home crying and piss in their pants, which they could also use in terms of man the fuck up. It's complete contrast there. Um, but I, I think it's uh ah, man. I think it's a, uh, it's a good strong case for Conte to be honest. And I'm, I've said for a long time, I do not believe, I do not believe the zero percent rumors about Conte, I think he's very, very much being discussed. I really, really do. Mm, has to. Now, we do have um, a follow up from Milan, and that was that uh, Delict did not receive the armband. And he says that Delic left because of not getting the arm. I don't think that was the case. Um, not getting the armband, and honestly, okay. I wouldn't have given it to, to him. Be, anyways, he wanted to be an attacker. <laughs> but based on his interviews, yeah, he wanted to yeah. play striker. I'm no, I wouldn't have given him the armband. He wasn't there at the time, ready to be it. His performances were not saying so. Uh, no, and him leaving. Yeah, he got uh, completely overshadowed by Bremer and whatnot, and uh, so uh, he, he also crazy. came in. He came in at the wrong time. Like yeah. if he, if he came in like two years earlier or played at Juve when they were at their prime, he would have stayed. But now he, we knew he, it's just a matter of time. He's not going yeah. to finish his career at Juve. The coach bears the most weight. If you had to pick who is the main culprit for this crap, football, players, or coach, have to pick one. Coach. Is it easy for me? It's not like 100%, but if I have to pick one, yeah. Allegri has more percentage. In I'm going to tell you it. why I have a hard time picking one is because if you freeze-framed our game in scenarios – you will see how many times our players pass up 
the opportunities to advance the ball with very, very key passes, it is insane. It is a major culprit for this crap football. And it's no, it shouldn't have been any surprise that when you change the midfield with Miretti and Alcarez, it actually did have the most fluidity we've probably seen all season. They just fell individually. Hmm. A lot of it is the players. But but the question is, to what you're saying, I mean, you're talking about the moments where they have an opportunity to pass and they don't do it. And I'm just talking about the crap football in general. For me, the crap football in general still has a huge, huge weight on the players. They're, they're not advancing the ball. They're not taking any chances with their passes. Like they, no. they have no confidence to make these passes. They are the ones standing there. However, however, I'm just saying they have this, this massive, massive shortcoming from the players. But as a coach, at what point do you step in and say, guys, where's the video review? Where are they looking at this and saying, hey, you know, why are you not making this pass? Why are we not picking up the tempo? Because tempo has a lot to do with crap football. You make it way too easy for your opponents. Ultimately, it is the coach and his staff uh, as the most weight, okay? But these players, I'm just saying it's not like 70, 30% or 80, 20%. It is ultimately coach and their staff, but it's not as heavily skewed in my no, personal opinion. No, That's no, all I'm not, saying. They're not innocent. Uh, about the passing, yeah, we kind of talked about it yesterday in the green room, not during the live. Um. I, don't, I think that's more related to instructions to some degree. Like, if they're afraid to pass, it's because someone would be angry with them for trying it. And Allegri maybe likes to maintain the ball, and if the option is not good enough, pass it backwards, don't lose the ball. It seems like the defenders have a lot more freedom to try long balls than our midfielders. Yeah. And that's annoying. I, I don't know who's to blame. And yeah, it's not 70-30. But if I, if I have to pick one, yeah, coach. Yeah. This is what it is. But today, you guys, got to get the job done. Got to get the job done. I saw Michael Razo in there talking somewhere about uh, old Dimebag. Dimebag Daryl Abbott there from Pantera, one of my absolute favorites. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Zach actually Wild guy. Joking. I'm a big Zach Wild guy, Black Label Society, Zach Wild and Dimebag. Those are my guys. Um, horrible, horrible. I remember when Di Dimebag uh, passed and how it went down. I actually had a sick Dimebag uh, tribute guitar, one out of 300 that they made. And the dealer that I bought it from actually put a sparkle finish on it. So this guitar, Omar, was gray, white, and black camo, but the camo, the designs in it were actually his famous signature poses. So from a distance, it was just like cool. the classic Dean dime bag design, but black, white, and gray camo. And then when you got close to it, you saw the, that the black markings on it in the camo were actually his signature poses. It was unreal guitar. I ended up oh. Beautiful. Making a stupid mistake, regretted it almost immediately, but I sold the thing. Um, ridiculous. I should have never, oh. should have never. Do you sold have a it. photo? Can you send me a photo? Do you have it somewhere? Um, I should have some photos of it somewhere. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It was, it was unreal, yeah. especially with the dealer that I bought, like actually like taking the clear off, adding a sparkle finish to it, and then refinishing. It was unbelievable. But uh, dime bag was just I, so, so sick. Dime bag, yeah, the best guitar tone. Like the most, uh, you instantly recognize it. Oh yeah. And but I'm like a Symphony X, uh, Nightwish, Sonata Arctica, Epica, those type of bands. The more like theatrical. Uh, yeah. So Michael Romeo from Symphony X is like that. My jaw dropped the first time I saw him. He has this com all white Fender Stratocaster. I loved it. I wanted to buy it. It was super expensive. 
I have one time had so many electric guitars, man. Like, I don't know. I had like six or seven at one point. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I always, always ended up picking up though my uh, Sunburst Les Paul. And that was the one I always picked up yeah. to play. So versatile, play everything. And so that's actually, what I always went Ep to. So actually Epica, their lead guitarist plays with a Les Paul, seven string Les Paul, which I've never seen in a metal band. To be honest, yeah. I think he's the only one I saw with a Les Paul that plays for a death heavy metal band. Yeah, it's uh man, it's it's good. I don't have as much time as I'd like to, but uh, I'm down to just the acoustic now, actually, and like sold all the electrics. I'll get back into it eventually. The goal is to have a full studio, not just for the pod and everything, but actually set it up all for music and everything. And the drum set, I had a drum set for a while. Same thing. I'd always pick up the guitar. I traded my drum set for an epic old school uh, uh, foosball table. One with the one goalies okay. in the back and everything. My buddy yeah. wanted a drum kit. I wanted his foosball. I was like, you know what? Take the drum kit. Give me that foosball table. He was reluctant at first but because uh, it was just such a mint, mint table. But yeah, we pulled it off. Les Paul. Hmm. Look yeah. at that. I love the metal talk. Love the music talk. We like to uh, mix it up in here. But uh, Dimebag, Daryl, I'm man, Pantera. Top Pantera song, if I had to name one, man. Mouth for War is epic. I'd probably say Mouth for War. Um, five minutes alone. No. Cowboys from Hell, though, it absolutely has to be Cowboys from Hell for me. Yeah, love that I mean, song. The, the fact that album. the Dallas Stars hockey team came out to it, unreal walk incredible song cemetery yeah. gates oh man love it but for me yeah i'd have to go with cowboys from hell insane cowboys insane. from hell is is really the, the one that you know I, I immediately heard it and i wanted to hear more the album is phenomenal my second favorite is the great southern trendfield and yeah. the best song song on that album hard for me to choose actually yeah uh, i'll have to think about it it's hard to choose yeah there you go look at that mix it up get a little metal talk and that is also yeah, a sign maybe of the we'll times. do a music pod one day <laughs> starting well you know what with music. we'll we'll start doing some um you know some uh, members chats and stuff like that and uh we can just uh mix it up about anything that's the whole thing about the member chats is man we, we talk about literally anything in there. And the WhatsApp chat, that's private as well. That goes everywhere, believe me. And uh, it's not just football. It's life. It's everything. You get to know everyone that's in our AJC community, and it's fantastic. I've learned so much about, you know, our friend Tony Trim. I've learned a ton about Sev, uh, who goes by Muser99 out here. I've, I've learned a ton about all these people from that and it's beautiful that's one of the ways to uh obviously support us as well is become a member that's only available through the desktop you have to be on a desktop and our friend rick ozzy from jcd melbourne official fan club man he has gifted literally over 30 memberships throughout this season incredible stuff uh i can't thank him enough but uh, we love the support there i'm actually trying to tee up getting rick on the show and i'd like to join his podcast of uh three juventinos there and uh show some love we get a ton of love out of australia and uh it's it's just a wonderful thing so thank you everybody who has become a member is a member we are always looking to do things if you guys have ideas for uh, new content that you want to see just hit us up we're open to everything, all right? But I do want to have call-in shows more often. Um, lately, life's kind of interfered, but we are going to be setting up some call-in shows. I'm um, looking at doing one in earlier time and one later evening time. We'll see how it plays out, but we want to get some call-in shows as well and just get you guys as involved as possible, all right? So again, massive thank you as always. Today, Juve Lazio, Coppa Italia, Sammy First Lake. The predictions are in. Let's see what goes down. Let's hope for a victory. Let's hope for a good showing. Let's hope for a performance that gives us some faith about turning it around down the stretch. Enjoy the game, everybody. Thank you again for the live session, all right, and all the great questions and discussions. We will see you tomorrow.
post-match pod. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's a victory Wednesday. Fino alla fine, Forza Juventus, please avenge that last defeat. Let's kick the shit out of Lazio. Come on, guys. Please, let's go. Yeah.